I have a supplementary to my question four, where I asked about the proposed change um, in agenda item six that says the parties to the complaint must not publicise the fact or contact or content or the complaint or the outcome without the agreement of the monitoring officer. This is a new proposed rule. Um, my question is, has this rule already been used to, for dealing with any complaints? That rule, as I understand, is one we will discuss when we come to the agenda item. Okay. So you are asking if it's been retrospectively? Yes, that's what I'm asking. Uh, I kind of need a clear answer. Do we have any responses to that? Uh, the only thing I would say, Chair, is that uh, when, we, when we receive a complaint, we impress upon complainants and um, actors who are the subject of the complaint to um, maintain confidentiality in, um, in, in the process. Um, and this seeks to just recognise that. It's been a long, long standing position of mine that um, in order to ensure the fairness to, to both parties, that um, a degree of confidentiality is maintained. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I hope that is. That was the one question. Yeah. Yeah. So we will not move away from. My, my, I have got a question. Please. which included um, the question, please can the monitoring officer pro provide a clear statement to confirm that all requirements of section 28 of the Localism Act 2011 have been met. This is a requirement, there is a requirement under the Localism Act 2011 for the appointment of an independent person, independent person to be approved by a majority of the members of the authority can the monitoring officer confirm that all requirements of Section 28 of the Local, of local Localism Act 2011 have been met in all independent person appointments since 2021? If not, what is the impact and have the independent persons been appointed unlawfully? So, so for the benefit of the committee, the, um, the process to appoint the independent members was carried out by myself and the head of legal services. We, we advertised those roles. Um, we undertook um, a, a, an interview, um, an interview process, and we appointed a pool of um, independent persons. Um, there's no, there's no requirement in the legislation. And in fact, I think it would be, um, um, it would be a complete misreading of the legislation to think that that appointment would need to be made by full council. Our, our constitution is clear that there's only um, some very um, um, discrete roles that are appointed by full council. Um, the, the roles of an independent person are analogous to um, the roles of the independent members of the audit committee, for instance, um, who are um, appointed by uh, officers. Um, we have independent advisors who are uh, our shareholder, who is also appointed by officers. Um, and we have other um, non-executive members who are appointed to our companies who are also appointed through um, similar processes. So um, I'm satisfied that the process to appoint the independent persons was um, robust and lawful and I don't think I have anything other to add yet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.